Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn, ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn, tell people to stay off the lawn, compare it to your neighbor's lawn, and complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company, affiliates, and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to Geico. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Greetings from Tromaville. This is Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of The Toxic Avenger. You know, folks, when, not, when we're not making those great movies like uh, Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, we like to kick back and, and listen to This Week in Geek. Because This Week in Geek is absolutely the best the best visual entertainment that we have ever seen. It's incredible. When I listen to it on the radio, I can see it. I can see those geeks. I can smell them. I can hear them. And I can f*** them. Did you grow up with the Nest PlayStation? Star Wars cartoons and ABC TV. Do you like to think who would win in a fight between Batman and the Master Chief? Comics, games, movies, music, and TV. They're gonna tell you everything you need. Hey everyone, I'm Pierce the Punk Dirks from 90.1 FM's This Week in Geek on the scene with Mike the Birdman Dawn. And yes, we are here at the Bloor Street Cinema in Toronto. We are talking with legendary filmmaker Lloyd Kaufman, that's right, the founder of Troma Studios. The man, the legend himself, the guy who's responsible for Toxic Avenger and producing countless and countless, countless awesome trauma films. We are going to be talking with him in mere minutes here at the Bloor Theater, where uh, tonight the Toxic Avenger and Cannibal Musical, the debut uh, feature from the South Park guys, will be showing. Absolutely. This is a fantastic experience for us because we get to talk to somebody who has influenced so many careers. Peter Jackson, Quentin Tarantino, obviously the South Park guys, and influence us to a large degree. Yep, and plus we're going to be talking with a few of the Tromettes, too. Stay tuned, guys, because we're about to be talking with Lloyd Kaufman himself right here on This Week in Geek. We are here with Lloyd Kaufman. How are you doing tonight, Lloyd? Well, greetings from Tromaville, and not only am I here, but I've got the Toxic Avenger. I have Super Tromettes... Uh, Tromalaria and the amazing uh, um, um, Insomnia, Super Tromet Insomnia, and if we're lucky, if we're lucky, we're going to see Super. We're going to hear Super Tromet Deliria here at the Bloor Cinema for uh, the uh, week Geek Geek of the uh, What is it? This week in Geek. This week in Geek. That's my favorite show. We listen to it religiously, and I'm a dirty Jew. <laughs> All right, so Lloyd, with those who aren't familiar with your awesomeness, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, uh, my name is Lloyd Kaufman. I'm a gay married man. Uh, I'm two inches erect. Uh, what else about myself do you want to know? Uh, oh, you mean about Troma Entertainment being the uh, 35-year-old independent movie studio? It's the longest-running movie studio that's independent in history. And uh, it's still, uh, thanks to people like uh, you and this wonderful radio show, it's still around. And, here, and if I'm not mistaken, that's Super Troma Deliria here at the Blues. The Bloor Cinema, the Super Troma Deliria. Uh, how did you first discover uh, the Troma aroma? How did you discover it? Because Troma's been around for 35 years and has never, ever had a hit. I mean, Troma's been around for 35 years and it's amazingly uh, influential. How did you first hear about it? 
Well, it started off with getting the Toxic Avenger as just kind of a whim and being like, wow, I can't believe someone would make a movie like this. I've got to just check it out. And then after a while, I noticed that all these great movies like Cannibal the Musical and Surf Nazis Must Die, they were all on the same mysterious trauma label. And after that, the word trauma was enough. Stuff Stephanie in the incinerator, done. Pick it up. <laughs> Didn't matter what it was, got it. Yeah, as long as it had trauma on it. From those first few kind of rare finds back in the days of VHS at random corner store video stores, that, uh, that inspired my love. <laughs> Speaking of the uh, the trauma family, what's it like being a uh, traumat? What what is sort of the the chaos that goes into that? Um, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> you get to go a lot of places that you wouldn't get to go because you're with Lloyd. Um, like I've got to meet George A. Romero, um, Toby Hooper. I can't even think of everybody else. Uh, and you get to be involved in just the circus that <laughs> is trauma. It's very, um, a lot of hard work, but very, very, very rewarding. And just to be a part of this in any capacity is just great, in my opinion. Now, just out of curiosity, out of all of you here, what is the most unusual experience that has happened to you on a trauma set or while out doing one of these various press tours? Hmm. The weirdest of the most screwed up. <laughs> Well, I think we'll, uh, we need to hear from uh, Super Traumat Insomnia, perhaps. Uh, tell us about what happened with... Because uh, Qu- Qu- Quentin Tarantino is a big fan of traumas. And uh, what happened last night at the trauma event with Sister... Uh, Sister, Con- Sister Salvation? Oh, a lot of craziness, a lot of dancing, talks he was on the stage, mopping it up, <laughs> beating some people brief around. amounts of nudity as well. I believe there was brief amounts of nudity as well at that show. It was, it was, a trauma show? I don't believe it. There was, there was naked men, uh, there was boobies shown, <laughs> there was women on the pole. Yep. Yeah. Insomnia is very true to her name. A lot of men weren't going to get any sleep that night, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Toxie, Toxie, tell us uh, a little bit about your career. You're the Toxic Avenger, and uh, how did it all happen, Toxie? Because you're, nobody ever paid any money for advertising, and somehow you were around uh, 25 years later, and a lot of the actors and stars of big budget movies, uh, you never, you know, who came out in 1982, nobody's heard of them, and yet the Toxic Avenger is. Uh, used in the New York Times and Toronto Globe as uh, in the editorials. Uh. Well, luckily, Lloyd, I can be I can relate to the common man. Uh, everyone can relate to the Toxic Avenger because you know there's the nerd in all of us who's like picked on by the the bullies of life and everything like that, and then we all have to come together for the better of the world and uh, fight the evils that are all around us and uh, make the world a better place. That's the Toxic Avenger. Actually, I just thought about the Toxic Avenger. Are there any plans for a DVD release of the Toxic Avenger cartoon that was on in the early 90s? Well, I have very, very good news for you, Michael. Um, The Toxic Avenger cartoon, the entire series, is in the complete Toxic Avenger box set. Seven big discs. And um, I said discs. Uh, (laughs) Just in case uh, Tromania, uh, Tromalaria misunderstood me. Uh, and um, uh, that, so you can see all of the cartoons if you get the complete, I think it's the only place where you can see them, the complete Toxic Avenger box set uh, available at Troma.com. With um, the Toxic Avenger, like you've been talking about how everyone can uh, relate to him as sort of like the common man. I think that's one of the reasons why it's still so popular to the state and has gone to like spawn cartoon series and just been this, this mass uh, cultural phenomenon. Like it's being shown in theaters 24 years later. Something had to be right about this film. Major names in Hollywood have been inspired by Toxic Avenger and other trauma films like Quentin Tarantino, Peter Jackson, etc. All these huge famous filmmakers with uh, so many uh, A-name uh, directors and just people in Hollywood being inspired by trauma. Do you think that has uh, helped Hollywood? Do you think Hollywood's actually sort of being revolutionized by these people that got their start in independent film and are becoming the, the new mainstream directors? Or do you think that the trauma sort of mindset of creativity is finally making its way to the mainstream? Uh, good question. I think um, visionaries, uh, not just trauma, of course, but I think the kinds of movies that we made 20 years ago where we sort of combined, Peter Jackson says we, and James Gunn, who did a movie here called Seizure right here in Canada, uh, they say that, uh, you know, I created the slapstick gore movie. 
And uh, now, 20 years later, how many films are, you know, big time, 80 million, 100 million dollar movies are uh, combining humor and gore. And uh, and uh, so I think that we have some kind of I mean, certainly these directors like Takashi Miike, uh, you know, Ichi the Killer, he told he says that Trom was a big inspiration to him. And uh, the biggest problem we have, of course, is that. Uh, this industry of ours is an uh, entertainment industry and media. The media is so consolidated vertically that it is very, very difficult for independent filmmakers and artists of any type to penetrate the hymen of the mainstream marketplace. And when we do uh, penetrate that particular hymen, we get, we're the ones who get fucked. And, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Tromalaria, uh, is there any uh, kind of recent trauma movies? Because, uh, I mean, you're, an, you're, you're very well educated, very sophisticated. Could you tell us what, what's uh, something new that you've seen from trauma that you like that maybe 20 years ago, Steven's, 20 years hence, maybe 20 years from now, Steven Spielberg will make a similar film? Well, I'm no expert, Lloyd, but uh, Troma just uh, released a three-disc edition of Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead. And uh, if you haven't checked that out, uh, it's got some crazy karaoke tunes, a crazy ensemble cast of crazy Troma freaks gore all over the place. There's there's singing, there's fast food nightmares. It's, it's just all packed in there in that package, and you can pick it up. Well, not just that in my package. Let me tell you, uh, these uh, excellent uh, Deluxe de uh, three-disc d- d- edition. Uh, also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Poultry Guys has got uh, an amazing amount of explosive diarrhea, which, of course, uh, uh, this week in Geek is very uh, expert on. And uh, also, um, the documentary that is in uh, the three-disc. Uh, the DVD of Poultry Guys Night of the Chicken Dead is uh, actually an edumentary. It's called Poultry in Motion, Truth is Stranger Than Chicken. And if any of you listening are, are students of the cinema, uh, I think you should see that documentary. It's a feature-length documentary behind the scenes of how Poultry Guys was was laid. And it's, uh, I, I think there's been very good word of beak. Would you say that? Uh, Definitely. Tromalaria likes the puns. She likes my foul movement. <laughs> Actually, just had a thought here. Now, because in... Don't do that. That's dangerous. It's amazing. Mike really has thoughts. It's true. Now, <laughs> which I rarely do. Now, with... Exactly. Now, with the world changing right now, with the presidency over in the U.S. changing, do you think that will open up the market for independent filmmakers? Do you think the media will change over in the U.S., maybe be a little bit more open to stuff like Troma, since I know Obama is a huge geek? Uh, no. The, uh, the uh, independence, the biggest hope for the independent artist is the digital re- revolution and peer-to-peer. And as long as the Internet... I am the chairman of the Independent Film and Television Alliance, which is which shows you how desperate they are. No, no, I mean, which uh, that is the trade association for all the important independent movie studios. Uh, Troma, Roger Corman, the guys who made Crash, uh, Academy Award winning Crash, uh, 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 the uh, Monster, Monster, uh, that uh, most of the Academy Awards are won by independent uh, members of our trade association. And uh, we are all in this serious mess because we're basically economically blacklisted from American television. And I don't see... Obama has taken huge amounts of money from... You know, he raised $600 million, and most of it came from big corporations. You know, maybe a small amount came... You know, only $200 million, that's nothing. That came from maybe people, but there's another $400 million that came from these giant media companies and drug companies. And so I think he's going to... I don't think anything will happen. The biggest thing we have to worry about, and the reason I ran for chairman of the Independent Film and Television Alliance, is to lobby in Washington to preserve uh, net neutrality on the Internet. And, uh, you know, you guys here in Canada, luckily you don't have Parliament going now, so they can't do any damage. But if they get rid of the free and open Internet, the democratic Internet... Uh, uh, you'll end up with just uh, the, the major networks, and it'll end up just being uh, the way TV is now. And so all of you folks should be writing to your elected representatives and your commissions about uh, whatever. We have the Federal Communications Commission, and let it be known that if they s- screw around with the free and open Internet, you're going to kick them out of office. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty scary, all the, um, the, the invasions of privacy and just on freedom and creativity that have been going on. 
But Troma has always stood there over the past, how, how long has it been now? It's been over, what, 30, over 35 years. Troma has stood up to the, the mainstream corporation and done the movies that you guys have wanted to make, have done the movies that the people have wanted to see. They just, they just didn't know, know the outlet for it before because there, there is no other, there, there's, there's trauma. Trauma is, trauma is the staple of independent film, in my opinion. And and with that uh, being said, what what can uh, the listeners look forward to seeing more from Trauma? Is there anything currently in development that is coming out in the uh, the near future? There is. Um, they're going to be companion pieces to the Make Your Own Damn Movie. Yes. Now there is going to be Direct Your Own Damn Movie, and is it Produce Your Own Damn Movie as well? Yes. Yeah, so those are going to be coming out, and they're really going to help independent filmmakers see behind the scenes and how to kind of guerrilla make <laughs> your own movie without the help of the big conglomerates. And yeah, just how Troma kind of does it, tricks that we've used in the past, and things you can kind of copy and use like as a model. Really, it's film school in a box, so instead of you know paying all that money to go to one of our fine institutions here you could just buy lloyd's works and really save yourself a lot of time and money yeah yeah i have to say i'm actually a a huge fan of uh the book make your own damn movie it's it's one of my favorite books and i i have to say i actually probably did learn more from that book than i did in like the two years actually pierce didn't you quote make your own damn movie in your recent thesis paper for for finishing college. Yeah, actually, my major uh, research assignment that I did for like my final third year of college was actually heavily inspired by Trump. was on producing independent horror and producing an independent film in the digital age. And yeah, just l- I learned so much from Troma. It's just it's great to see that there's a company still out there allowing uh, directors and creative minds to make the movies that they want to make outside of the mainstream Hollywood system. Why don't you send your paper to Troma's website? Because we publish... Uh Themes, uh, you know, tree, uh, the, uh, well, there's some PhD stuff on uh, Tromeo and Juliet from England, and and the term paper. You know, we we put all that stuff on our website. So uh, send it in, and Troma would love to share it with our fans. Oh. Awesome. So is there is there anything that you guys would like to say in just uh, closing up? Well, uh, certainly uh, the week of Geek. Uh, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be here without the week of Geek. This is you know, I've been making movies for 40 years, and. Uh, Finally, after all this time, finally the Week of Geek uh, puts me on. So, I mean, it took you guys 40 years, but very appreciative. I think this is the highlight of my career. I, I think I can speak for the Toxic Avenger and the Super Tromets that, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Week of Geek is uh, the, the climax. And thank you so much. And thank you to our Canadian fans for uh, being so uh, uh, aggressive about finding trauma movies and supporting us because there's no question that we can put on Troma Dance Film Festival, which you can go to traumadance.com and learn about that. It's a free film festival that takes place during Sundance. All of these things that we do uh, are all thanks to our fans who support us, and uh, we don't have to kiss too much uh, butt. uh, uh, Thanks to our fans, you know, we can poke a finger in the eye of the establishment, and uh, it's only because we have a very loyal uh, group of fans. We just need more. Not just fans. We need air conditioners. (laughs) And if anybody wants to go onto Amazon.com and review the books or Poultry Geist, for example, we could really use that great press because the more Amazon hears how great Lloyd's books are, the more they'll want to get his direct books. Movie, dire- uh, sorry, Direct Your Own Damn Movie will come out in January through uh, Reed Elsevier uh, Press, which is, uh, owns a Focal Press, F-O-C-A-L. I think that actually it's Focal Press. But it's Direct Your Own Damn Movie, which followed up the Make Your Own Damn Movie, second most read book since the Bible. And better than. Way better than, yes. <laughs> I can attest to that. Well, thank you so much for your time, everyone. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Lloyd, thanks thanks for coming out and speaking on today. And Tromets and, of course, Toxie. Yes. Well, anyway, guys, so for This Week in Geek, we are... Pierce Dirks. And I'm, of course, Mike the Birdman Dodd saying live free and die hard. And we will be back next week on thisweekingeek.net and, of course, 90.1 FM CRNC. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all stages or situations. Geico presents oh, yet another voicemail from your roommate. 
So, about the kitchen. Turns out, when there's a grease fire, you're not supposed to throw water on it. <laughs> Who would have known, right? Anyways, the fire department is here, and it's totally cool. Give me a call back when you get a chance. The Geico Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected, like if danger is your roommate's middle name. Visit Geico.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. Amazing interview. Thank you so much once again to Lloyd Kaufman. Awesome time sitting talking with him and the Tromets and Toxie, of course, yeah, at the Bloor Cinema. That was remarkably cool. I just couldn't believe how friendly ev- everybody from Troma is. Yeah, like like they like to say, it's like a family, <coughs> even though they like to refer to it as a Manson family. I I would have to disagree. It's one of the nicest, most down the earth sort of uh, and independent communities out there. Absolutely. Actually, it was kind of funny, Pierce. Um, I did an interview with a uh, journalist at Sheridan this week, and he asked me mm-hmm. what was what what was Lloyd Kaufman like. And the quote that I gave the paper was, "Lloyd has the most genuine handshake I've ever experienced of anybody in the major media." I think I would have to agree with that. Lloyd's just one of those friendly. guys, and. And you know he loves what he's doing. That's the reason why he does it. And it's just there's something that you you have to like commend about someone who's been doing what he does for so long, and he's doing it for the love of it. Exactly. I mean, there's such a community built up around him, and it's like you described it to me earlier off air, Pierce. You were saying Troma is the punkers of the movie world, and what that means is they never gave up, they never sold out, they stuck to their principles. And that's what makes the trauma community so lively is because they thought they can make movies about surfing ninjas and guys who had toxic waste made them into superheroes, but really bizarre movies like Cannibal the Musical, which we also saw. I think that's one of the reasons why I like trauma so much, because to me, they're sort of like the punk rock of cinema. It's because they do they do stick to their guns. They make films that they want to make, not the films that are currently popular in the media and the films that they made because they wanted to make them. They're the ones that filmmakers later went back and looked upon, like, "Hey, these movies are awesome." They're um, they're they're saying of movies of the future. To me, it it rings it rings true perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I think basically trauma, in my opinion, mirrors YouTube. You can make whatever you want, and they'll just do it. I mean, I never would have imagined a movie like Sergeant Kabuki Mad, NYPD Blue, or sorry, and. NYPD, rather. <laughs> That's the sequel. Um, or stuff like The Class of Newcomb High or Surf mm. Nazis must, must Die. So bizarre concepts, yet made competently, yet with that 1950s sort of campiness and B-movie status to it, that really made the movies accessible to a large audience in the fact that they're goofy and fun. Well, I think one thing that sort of that adds to... Um the trauma verse of filmmaking is that Lloyd used to be a, a big fan of, uh, of, of Broadway musicals and all that before he got into film. So I think that's, that's why we see a lot of, uh, musical elements incorporated into it. And also just the, the slapstick comedy of Charlie Ch- Chaplin and, and the early silent films and, and all that. So that's with... why it's so over the top. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I love about trauma, and especially if you if if you go to a movie store, you go to a rental store, and, and try to to find the proper category for trauma films, where are they going to go? I mean, they've Comedy got horror, horror, they've yes. got romance, they've got action. It's, Have they it's ever all done over the a place. true a like true sci fi? Probably a few at least. They've their films go all they go all over the place. That's that's why I love that. In certain video stores, there is a trauma section. It's because. They're so that hard weird. to classify. It's just they they break boundaries, they break the rules, and they they create something that's truly unique and entertaining. And there's boobs. Yes, there's there's lots of boobs. Now, isn't that what Lloyd said in one of his books? If you can get a chick to take her top off, do it, and it'll make your movie that much better. Or Some, something, like- something along those lines. You, it, it goes back to the um, the trauma attitude when they first started out doing sexy comedies like uh, Stuck on You and the Cry first Uncle Turn On and, that, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, so I don't know. That's I, I guess that's an, another reason why I, I like trauma. Yes, I love boobs. But at the same time, <laughs> it's the fact that it's presented in such a goofy, over-the-top manner. I mean, like in Sergeant Kabuki Man... It makes no sense. Or the, the the one chick is being murdered in the park, and her boobs just randomly fall out while she's having the crap kicked out of her. And that it, uh, it was amusing because this is the stuff that we giggle about because it's so ridiculous. And I think that's to me that's the appeal of trauma to me anyway. It's goofy, no, and I love it. Come on. Oh, you don't take me. Oh no, you lied to me. You said 
you were going to take me to see the David Bowie concert. He's not David Bowie. Only 12 years old and only $12. Hey, everybody, this is Steve Snowball Sailor here at the Blur Street Cinema, and we just started finishing watching Toxic Avenger. We're actually here with, I'm sorry, what's your name? Paul Marin. Hi, Paul. How's he doing? I am very well, thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Now, are you a trauma fan, or are you just kind of a new to this whole thing? I have been a trauma fan for a while, and uh, this has been excellent to see the, obviously, the one it's known for on the big screen. Uh, so, all right, so now what, now what do you like about Toxic Avenger itself? I, it, no, the movie knows what it is. You know, it, it knows it's over the top, it's fun and everything like that. It's disgusting, and that's what it's all, it, trauma's all about. You know, that these fun kind of political satires and everything like that that kind of turned it on its head and, you know, make fun of the old cliches and stereotypes, so... That's cool. Now, what what, what is your uh, favorite trauma movie of uh, minus obviously Toxic Avenger because it's the first one? Uh, well, now uh, Poultry Geist. After seeing that, you know they kind of done it again. I thought it was one of their best films, while well, Lloyd one of Lloyd's best films and everything. So yeah. All right. Now, have you met uh, Lloyd before, or is this your first time? Um, m- no, many times. I've been uh, telling him about my new film um, uh, that's coming out shortly. Oh, cool. What's your new film? It's a dark horror comedy called My Wife is a Vampire. Oh, cool. When are, that, uh, are you working on that right now, or is that going to be out soon? Or It is currently being finished up and everything like that. It's uh, my, by my company, Marin's Movies. And uh... Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, Paul. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I won't hurt you. I don't know what came over me. I just couldn't control myself. I've never done anything like this before. All right, hey everybody, this is Steve Snowball Sailor for This Week in Geek, and I'm here at the Blue Street Cinema. We just finished watching Toxic Avenger. We're going to watch Cannibal the Musical in just a few minutes, and I'm here with... Nicholas Rainville. And Jesse Cree. All right, and what do you, uh, what do you, hear, what do you like about uh, the movies that you're here to see tonight? It was just so inventive and creative, and I, I loved it so much. <laughs> what about you? It's definitely very entertaining, uh, very funny. Have you guys seen these movies before? I haven't seen either one before, actually, but I'm actually planning on going to see Cannibal the Musical um, later on, on stage, so I'm excited to see that one as well. Oh, cool. What about you? I've seen Cannibal before in some other trauma movies, but I'm sad to say I hadn't seen Toxic Avenger before tonight. But So what do you guys think of Toxic Avenger? Oh, it, was, it was a great movie. It was just ridiculously entertaining for what it, like, even with, it just shows that you don't need an amazing budget to make an entertaining movie. What about you, Jesse? Uh, basically the same. It is a low-budget movie, but very entertaining at the same time, So, which actually helps make it entertaining, because everything they try to pull off, they actually do pull off, but uh, low-budget. and. True. All right, now what do you guys think of uh, Lloyd Kaufman? <laughs> he was, he's hilarious, and just, I love talking about these diatribes when you'd ask him one question, he'd answer in a surprising way. It was. Yeah. He doesn't think very highly of himself, I just <laughs> say that. He's a... Uh, Nah, whatever. <laughs> My movies suck. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Now you're a film. Uh, you're in film, correct? You're a film student. Correct. All right. So, what do you think of the, about now as a film student? What do you think about that? Uh, like, uh, kind of seeing this movie and seeing kind of how Lloyd Kaufman has been kind of like this for forty years. Like, what, is that inspired? Is it not inspired? Is it like what, what's going on there? It's definitely inspiring. I mean, he's he's here. He's talking about his film. He's obviously proud of it, even though he uh, doesn't say he is. Um, <laughs> what would be your first like major opus that you would like, like to be able to make? Like, say say for instance, if you were able to make a trauma film, what would, what would you like to make it about? Um, that what would I like to make it about? I don't, well, I think he's covered it here: head crushing and <laughs> and uh, shooting dogs. Maybe I, I don't know. <laughs> what about you? Uh, my friend uh, Ian and I actually love that type of film, and uh, we wrote one called "The Creature from China Palace." That's about a, a monster MSG, like creative MSG, and it's it's totally in that spirit. So it's it's great to see movies that because we don't have much of a budget now in film school. So we it's have, great to see that you can do have, amazing things with no money. <laughs> we have zero zero budget, not not much of a budget, <laughs> zero. <laughs> All right, cool. So now uh, we're going to see Cannibal the Musical. Is there any other, uh, now that you've seen trauma films, as uh, at least the one that started, is there any other films you're going to watch from this, uh, this stuff from now on? Or you become a fan, not so much of a fan, or what? I'll definitely try to watch other trauma films. I haven't actually seen many other trauma films, so I'm planning on, on uh, watching some more. As soon as I get home, I'm borrowing some from my friend because he has a bunch of them. <laughs> nice. Now, uh, 
Oh, I was gonna say. Oh, we get. What did you get? Uh, how'd you guys hear about this? Uh, like this event uh, as far that was put on by the Blue Cinema. Actually, this guy told me about it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I actually got a Facebook message from the Toronto After Dark Festival, and I, as soon as I read that, I was just like, I have to go to this. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. This thing, this monster, I've I, I never seen anything like it before. I don't know what it was, but, but God bless him, because he saved my life. <laughs> Awesome, Snowball. Well, thank you for that, Steve. It was so cool that that was your first experience with Troma, and you're asking fans about it, so you're kind of sharing in the, the pooled experience, if you will. Yeah, I love how Steve's reaction throughout the uh, the screening, it was along the lines of being shocked at times, being confused at times, and then generally laughing and just having many what the hell, and then later on what the fuck moments yeah it's just <laughs> steve kept whispering over to me because i was sitting beside him it was steve me dave and then pierce and steve would whisper over in my ear mike this is really fucked up but awesome <laughs> what's going on and it was just so cool i mean when me and steve watched cannibal the musical it was literally a lot of jaw dropping what the hell's going on moments yeah that, that was your guys first times watching it. I, I i had seen the film like 10 times before that yeah and it was incredible actually to follow up to the story and i've been wanting to tell this on air for about a week now we uh we're trying to take snowball back to college oh yes and we got lost and steve was convinced we were going the right way so it was a lot like the character from cannibal the musical which what was alfred his name packard. Again? alfred packard alfred packard and i was and what Pierce and I have been driving for about 20 minutes. We don't know where the hell we are. And we're lost in Toronto. And I look over at a pile of snow. Remember looking over at Pierce. We should make a snowman. And instantly that song started playing. We, we got lost, I have we, to we say, about 40, 40, minutes the wrong 40, 40, the, 40 to 50 minutes lost in one direction. Steve the entire time was like, oh, no, we're going, we're going the right way, guys. I swear, we're going the right way. We're going the right way. So we eventually we made it to Breckenridge. Yes. <laughs> A.K.A. Humber College. It was fun, though. <laughs> And that's why, for his birthday, I'm buying Steve a map. That's right. You heard it. You heard it here first, Steve. A map of Toronto. That's what you get, you bastard. But yeah, it was it was so weird. Just the fact that our that our evening mirrored a trauma film, and I found that kind of fun. And also all the snow out there, and the fact that Dave was going crazy. <laughs> oh God, I couldn't believe how weird Dave got right towards the end of that. Uh, but oh, actually, while well, I'm thinking about it, one of the best things about that whole night was hanging with the trauma. That's for just 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, they're, they're they're really cool girls and just very down to earth and, and very nice to talk to. Like, there was one, her, oh, her stage name is what? Um, Dem Dementia? Dementia, yeah. It was just cool because we started talking about podcasting and all that stuff. Turns out she's really involved in the Toronto scene for that sort of stuff, like getting people involved in the horror community and everything. And I just found that kind of neat that... There's other people like us out there. And the Blur mm -hmm. seems to really bring everyone together like that. Yeah. And that's one thing. I really got to send a huge shout out to the Blur Street Center. I'm talking Peter, Victoria, and the person who served us popcorn that night. <laughs> <laughs> it made the night not suck. And I think as a closing thought, that's what we've been basically saying the, this whole show. Trauma is like a family. And when you... And visiting the Blur is like visiting the cousin you, you don't see too often, yet really love to hang out with. Mm -hmm. It's a warm community. The, the Troll Mess made us feel welcome. Lloyd made, made us feel really welcome. Toxie was just cool. And just everybody there was on equal ground. And everyone was just there to enjoy a laugh at a weird movie. And a really bizarre musical. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Troma family, we have a new addition to our family, and I guess we're part of another family, too. We have Uncle Lloyd. That's Absolutely. right, Lloyd Kaufman. We are producing the official Troma Entertainment Troma cast. So you heard it here first, folks. Bi-weekly, we'll be bringing you just all the information you could you could want on Troma films, reviews of the DVDs, and cool all interviews. that stuff. And yeah, it's, it's going to be kick-ass. The first episode will be on the Toxic Avenger and should be released shortly thereafter this. So yeah, so just keep uh, just keep checking the Troma website and uh, as always guys, if you have any feedback about the show we would love to hear from you. Feedback at thisweekingeek.net or our new voicemail line, 817-717-7202 If your voicemail is cool, we'll put you on the show. Hey, if you even want to send stuff to the Troma cast, feel free to use that number too. Yep, yeah, but uh, anyway, for This Week in Geek, we have been 
right, you go well, first. I side off. <laughs> no, you, you, blah, 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 blah. So for this week in Geek, we have been Pierce the Punk Dirks. And I've been, of course, been Mike the Birdman Dodd saying live free or die hard. Keep checking into thisweekingeek.net for more great geek content and head over to trauma.com to check out the Troma cast, which will be up very shortly. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. And well, keep it locked right here. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. You shouldn't go to Barnes & Noble and buy 10,000 books just so you can build a book fortress and yell out, I am your book leader. You shouldn't buy 147 copies of War and Peace, stuff them inside turkeys and serve them at Thanksgiving as terbukens. And you definitely shouldn't buy up all the copies of Dork Diaries, causing the neighborhood kids to stage a protest in your front yard. But you could. Because at the Barnes & Noble Book Hall, you can get over a 1,000 titles for 50% off. Stock up at your local Barnes & Noble. Terbukens are fictitious and should not be cooked at home.